chapter 54, 1 Timothy, the 54, 54th book of the Bible. Sing, O barren. Usually a woman that's barren that doesn't have any children, what's she to sing about? Hannah was upset that she had no children. She was uh, distraught by the, her husband's other wife. She had children and Hannah didn't have no children. She cried at the temple, cry in prayer. Thou that didst not bear. So it tells you what barren is. Someone that has not bared a child. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, rejoicing that thou didst not travail with child. I mean, to a woman of the Orient that has not given birth to a child, especially a firstborn male child, that's not a time to rejoice in. For more, for more are the children of the desolate alone than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Well, if a woman is desolate, how is she going to have children? The nation of Israel today is desolate. Though there have been many Jews, they're not even in their homeland. They are overshadowed by Gentiles in the nation of Israel today. They are overshadowed wherever they are in the world. There are more Gentiles in America than there are Jews. They are against God today, and God is against them. For rebellion, for not doing what God has told them to do. Speaking to the barren nation of Israel, he goes on to say, Enlarge the place of thy tent. Here's a tent. All right? Make it bigger. Why? You're going to get more children. It's going to be more people. And you've got to make it bigger because you're going to get a family. You think about maybe this barren woman. She's got one of those little tiny poop tents. You know, just enough maybe for two people. God says, we're going to read. Gather up, because he says, and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Stretch out the canvas. Stretch out the the curtains of this tent make more add more make it bigger spare not don't be stingy with the cloth don't be stingy with the with the tarp don't be stingy with the canvas spread it out lengthen thy cords and that's the ropes that hold the tent stretch out the curtain stretch out the the rope you're going to need a lot more rope because you're going to fill this little tent. You're not going to be able to fit everybody in there. You've got to stretch it out. And strengthen thy stakes. And that's what you put in the ground. Don't go with these little aluminum stakes. Maybe not even a little plastic one. Go for some iron steel stakes and put them in the ground and fasten them to the ground and get it right. We're looking at Israel right now in the millennium. They are going to grow with the Lord Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. They are going to grow as a group of people and they're going to grow right. They're going to grow holy. They are going to be truly God's people. Stretch out that tent. You're going to be in your land. Thou shalt break forth on the right hand. It's going to spread to the right. And on the left, it's going to spread to the left. Thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles. So it's not just going to be the land of Israel. It's going to be further. Uh, between David and Solomon, the, the rain actually went to the Euphrates River. It's going to be back there. There's a point, I forget where it says in the Bible, it says about the cities of refuge, that as you grow, you will add more cities. God intended Israel to grow in this land, grow, 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 grow. And that is not going on today. They don't even care about the, the land, really. And if they are going there, it's the land and it's not God. 
You don't have them going over there three times a year like the law said. And make the desolate cities, that's what they are today, to be inhabited. There are cities over there right now that it's called a tell, T-E-L. And what it is, it's just a mound or a hill built upon a city, built upon a city. And archaeologists go over there and dig, dig them up because there, there's no one there. And they dig up the history and the artifacts and all that. One day, as, he, as they're digging up these tells and places like that, one day they're going to be inhabited again. To the glory of God. For, fear not. Boy, they've been in fear in this tribulation period. For thou shalt not be ashamed. Well, Romans 10 says, Believing on the Lord Jesus Christ will make you not ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame under the Lord Jesus Christ. They're in shame today. If you were to go to a Jew today, a rabbi today, and say, Rabbi, I want to go to heaven. What must I do? He give you a shameful answer. A shameful answer that you cannot even do. And if you were to say, well, Rabbi, you're wrong. The Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, is God's true gift. He is the way, the truth, and the, and the life. And he'll laugh at you and ignore you. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood. Death today. They're dead. In trespasses. In sin. The wages of sin is death. The husband's gone. God has stepped away. For thy maker, capital M, is thy husband. Well, she's a widow. It's a liking God to being dead to Israel. And God doesn't die. So when you read about David and his concubines, he said he put them on the ward, I believe it is, in their widowhood. And David had not died. And David's a type of Jesus Christ. But in the eyes of God, these people, his wife, it's dead. It's a dead relationship. He separated them. And the Bible speaks about separation. There, there is this time, listen, I mean, if the marriage is so bad, did you just, maybe you just got to get away from each other and let things calm down and maybe seek counsel and all that. And yet God will come back to the nation of Israel and marry him again and take him as, as his wife. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer. He redeemed them out of Egypt under the blood. The Lamb. The Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth. Shall he be called. It's not what they're calling them today. They have no idea who the God of the Bible and the earth is. For the Lord has called thee as a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, a wife of youth, when thou was refused, saith thy God. No one wanted her. No one wants her today. Without, I will bless them that bless, bless thee. Without the sure mercies of God promised to David. Without the, the covenant that God had made with Abraham. Israel would have been wiped off the map a long time ago. And you wouldn't even have a Bible. Satan would have wiped them out with Abraham and Sarah if he had the chance. Satan would have wiped them out with Isaac and Rebekah. You know Sarah was barren. Rebekah was barren. Uh, Rachel was barren. Satan would have wiped them out just by having the mothers have no children. How are you going to have a family if a woman can't conceive seed? You can't do nothing with Abraham and Sarah if Sarah can't produce a child. You can't grow a family generation if Rebecca remains unable to produce a child. You sure are not going to have a family if uh, Rachel can't 
be pregnant. And Satan could have come in there, he could have had the Syrians, he could have had the Imelech, he could have had the Philistines, just wipe them off the map, like the Arabians today, and all the nations around them, if it wasn't sure to, for the sure mercies and the promise and the covenant God has given Israel. He's only set them aside. He's only put them, listen, if God was all through with Israel, on your maps today, Israel would be another country, another name. And Jerusalem would probably be given over to the Muslim name. Why is it that the Muslims there have the dumb of the rock, and yet the name is still found in the name that's in the Bible? Don't you think that makes them mad? We're going to go to the dumb of the rock and worship, oh, a man called Jerusalem that's in the Bible. Oh. I bet I wonder if they would love to change that name. But you can't, because the Bible set forth. The Bible tells you. This woman is rejected. And God says, I'll take you. For a small moment, that's the tribulation period. Small moment, seven years. Maybe just three and a half. The great tribulation. Minimum three and a half years, maybe full time, seven years. That's a small moment. You ever read in Revelation what is going to happen in that small moment? Have I forsaken thee? There you go, dear. You want to be rebellious against me? You don't want to listen to me as your husband? Then go. You go. Go to your father. Go to your husband, Satan. And then let him show you how much he loves you. Go! And then when I come back for you, you you have your tail between your legs. You're going to want me back. And you're going to be happy that I'm back. Some wives need this kick in the butt. Too fancy for their britches. Separation, Paul talks about in Corinthians. Small moment. That's... But with great mercies will I gather thee. It says in Revelation 12, he's going to give them wings of an eagle as an eagle. He has a place prepared for them. He's going to feed them. He's going to give them water. That's the great mercy. Running from the Antichrist. In a little wrath. A little wrath. <laughs> Earthquakes. These things that come out of the earth that sting you, that you can't have death if you wanted to die. The water turning to blood, forest fires, trees dying, Moses and, Eliah, Moses and Elijah having fun with the plagues. You receive the mark where you don't get nothing. That's a little wrath. What's a big wrath burning in hell for all eternity? And we read that in John 3 last night. A little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment. Did you just read what that said about the tribulation period? God says, nope, not looking. I don't see it. Moses, Elijah... 144,000, you go down there and take a look for me. I'm not looking. When was the last time God did that? Approximately 33 AD, when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, and God turned his face, and Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Here is what's going on with the nation of Israel. A little for a moment. But with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Again, Sailor Petra. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. We'll re keep reading, need to. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, God said there will be no more worldwide flood. Now there may be floods of cities, there may be floods of countries. But not a worldwide flood. 
So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. So when was the last time after Noah got out of that ark, when was the last time God had a worldwide flood? Drowned everybody out. He never had. Never done it. So when will God, once the tribulation period is over and the Lord Jesus Christ has come, when will God be angry with Israel after that? Never again. Once the Lord Jesus Christ picks up those Jews and says, preach and brings them into the land, there is no more wrath upon Israel. That's it. Glory. Honor. For the mountains shall depart. Say bye-bye. The hills be removed, flattening of the land. But my kindness shall not depart from thee. See that Mount Ararat? It's gone. Mount Everest, say goodbye. Mount McKinley, goodbye. Appalachian Mountains, see you later. The Hill of Calvary, bye. Bunker Hill, see you later. Being angry at the Jews, no more. Jews having sins as a nation, no more. God's bride, forever. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Well, I guess the United Nuts are going to be gone. And God will take over as the peaceful nation. Save the Lord that had mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, and they've been afflicted. We're talking about the Jew. Toss with tempest, storms, aggravations, assault, and not comforted. Who's really comforting them? Behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphire, precious, costly, beautiful. Jerusalem will be, the nation of Israel will be a splendid. It looks like it's even going to be beyond what David and Solomon had. Because you've got the Lord Jesus Christ and you have no more curse on the earth. You talk about lily the valleys. There is no more valleys. Just lilies. The rose of Sharon. A rose with no thorns and pure, pure color of, a, of the colors of a rose is without sin. I will make thy win windows of agate and thy gates of carbuncles. This is gems. You can look them up in a gem book. And all thy borders of pleasant stone. Built solid. Rock star solid. Get a piece of the rock. Used to be a commercial when I was a kid. I got the rock. And he's going to build his city upon rock. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. Oh, that's when Jesus will be the teacher. He's going to teach the, the children of Israel. And great shall be the peace of thy children. There will be a peace in this earth like the peace has never been set. The last time you had this peace is before Genesis 3. And there hasn't been that peace yet. Listen, even when Jesus was on this planet, there, was, there wasn't peace. He's walking down the street and there, there's, there's a mother's son dead in, in a coffin. There's Lazarus in a grave. There is people punching our Savior. He even reads one, he says one time that there was a tower that fell. And there was another news article of, of the great news. Here we are on live breaking news. It was two events. I forget what the other one was. And Israel wasn't in peace when the Lord Jesus Christ came. 
Those Pharisees, those Sadducees, the chief priests were stroking up the people every moment. Don't you you tell us where he is. Don't you follow him or you're not going to be in this, this assembly. You're not going to be part of our nation no more. Then there were people that were following Jesus secretly. That's not peace. The, the apostles, the 11 apostles, after Jesus rose from the grave, is sitting in, a, in an upper room afraid. That isn't peace. They're going through the book of Acts, getting in jail, getting killed left and right. That's not peace. In righteousness shall thou be established. There you go. The building thereof of Israel be righteousness. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Who's going to oppress them with Jesus there? Satan's locked up for a thousand years. Chained. For thou shalt not fear, and from terror, and it shall not come near thee. Peace, perfect peace. Behold, they shall surely gather together, united nations, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Germany will fall. Holland will fall. England will fall. America, if she goes against the Jews, which she's had, will fall. All nations, Russia, shall fall. I will curse them that curse thee. For thy sake, Israel. Behold, I have created this smith. That's the guy who works. That bloweth the coals in the fire. This will be a blacksmith. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. He, he's building something for a work. For his work. He's building a blacksmith tool. So he can do his job. And I have created the waster to destroy. Um, Jeremiah 57 verse 20 to 26. Isaiah 10, 5, 6, 13 to 16, and Hebrews 2, 9 to 14. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee, the Jew, shall prosper. Adolf Hitler did not win the war against the Jew. He ended up in a cave, suicidal idiot. You can come up with weapons of mass destruction over there in the Middle East, but it's not going to conquer and overthrow the Jew. It will overthrow you. Solomon saying went against Israel. Where is he today? Burning in hell. Again, he was found in a house or something like that. Hiding the little wimp. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall not, wait a minute, it rise against thee in judgment, let me try it again, and every tongue that shall rise against thee, the Jew, in judgment, thou shalt condemn. You can't even speak of, you better be careful how you speak about the Jew. You better be 100% sure because they're going to come and, and judge you. And when that Jew tells his, tells his husband, God, you're guilty, you are in trouble. Over a million Jews were killed in World War II by Adolf Hitler. Imagine each one of those Jews standing up and testifying against him. Now how will Adolf Hitler stand before the judge of all the earth and say, not guilty? You know how they get away with that today? They try to tell you that that never happened. The Holocaust was, was this a made up thing? They, they teach that today. It was all a big lie. Yeah? You wait till the mouth of all those people speak against Belshazzar, against Nebuchadnezzar, and Assyria, and Rome, and the popes, and Titus. You wait till those mouths of those Jews. Listen, isn't there a place in the Bible that says in Revelation that the souls of them that have been beheaded are crying out to God for revenge? Those souls that have been beheaded are not Americans. 
They're not Germans. They're not Africans. They're Jewish people calling out to God. You ever read the book of Psalms with David saying all the time, Lord, go get my enemy, kill him, smite him, protect me, though? It's a wonderful thing how much God loves Israel. It's a wonderful thing how much the world hates Israel. I've come across, I've got some Jewish people now, and I pray to God, please let me not offend them, even by stinking body odor. Though he may not believe in Jesus Christ, but he's still a Jewish person, and he's still loved by God. May I be more of a help to him. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, Jews. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I would go even so far with a Jew. I, mean, I know he's under law and everything. And I know the law is not today. But listen, if I'm going to sit down with a Jew, I better not offend him. That means if I'm sitting down in a restaurant, I better not sit there and have a ham sandwich in front of him. I mean, you want to talk about this thing with, you know, the, the flags and all that. That's offensive. That ham sandwich is offensive to the Jew, and that Jewish man is of God. Can you imagine him going to God the Father? Even though, I mean, listen, as a nation, I'm talking about as a nation. Individuals can be saved, but you imagine a Jew as a nation standing before God, saying, God, I didn't receive Jesus Christ, who you say is your Messiah. Because that Gentile there, who's speaking in the Bible, that guy had the nerve to eat a ham sandwich in front of me. You don't realize how much they honor that law. Doesn't Paul talk about eating certain things, all that, if it's offensive to others, that even he had to rebuke Peter because he left one of the apostles there. He got up from the table and walked away because he saw a group of people coming. He didn't want to be seen with a Gentile. you got to be careful. you got to be very careful when you deal with Jews. They're lost. As an individual, they'll go to hell, but they are still God's people. And you're not to offend anybody when it comes to the gospel. Particularly the one who came, John chapter 1, who is of the Jews are his brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ. Would he say, woe unto you, if you offend one, better for you to put a millstone about your neck? I know I can't lose my soul, but I don't want to offend them. Now, if I sit down with the Bible and show them they're wrong by scriptures, and he gets offended, okay, that's the word of God. That's his fault. That's his problem. But if I do something offensive to him that violates what he believes, and he has perfectly right, and I turn somebody off in the gospel. I know per I know purposely well, and I've been rebuked. You can't witness as anybody having a Budweiser in your hand. That ain't gonna work. You can't go door to door wearing a cigarette shirt. It ain't gonna work. Been there, done that. I had the zeal for the Lord. The nation of Israel is God's bride. Now, if God is all through with them, that means he had divorced them. And divorce is not the answer to the Bible. Even though Israel has committed adultery, and adultery is a punishable act that breaks a marriage, but the merciful, forgiving, long-suffering God of the Bible says, I forgive you. I love you. And I'll put all that away. And I know for sure when I, when I tweak your life, you ain't never going to do that again. Because I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to give you a new song. And I'll just remove that curse. 
I'll remove Satan out of your life and you will be a faithful wife. Right now, we haven't even come to the small moment. That's yet coming. See, an individual Jew can get saved today. You can bring him the gospel and he can trust the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And God will look upon it and smile and rejoice. And Jesus Christ will look upon it and thank the Father for coming down and giving us the gospel and dying for our sins. And be praised to the Lord Jesus Christ that the Father is happy. The word is still a, the word can be alive to a Jewish person today, but when the church is gone, that's it. God says, "I'm hiding my face from you for a little moment." Do you know how long God hid His face from Jesus? A little moment. But the Jews' little moment is a lot more moment than what He did for for Jesus. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. The tribulation period for Jacob's trouble is the reaping of their sins against God. And boy, they're going to get a beating. They are going to get a whipping. And when they get back up, the father is going to put his arms around them and say, I love you, you deserve that, now let's restore our fellowship. And be a fellowship that's never going to end. And when it says break forth your tents, do you know how in the eternal life, once new Jerusalem, new heavens and earth, do you imagine when, when the Jews are in the new earth, like Abe, like Adam and Eve, there's no pain, there's no sorrow. And, and women can give birth without no pain, no sorrow, no drugs or anything like that. Can you imagine how gross that nation will be when there's no time? You won't be able to, I mean, what do you say? There is no time in, in the eternal. Absolutely no time at all. So you can't say a woman's going to give birth in nine months. There are no months. And he says... Make the tents bigger. In the millennium you're going to grow, and in the eternal you're going to grow. He says, as the stars of heaven and as the sand of the sea. Imagine every born-again Bible-believing Christian. Imagine all the Jewish people in the Old Testament that did right. Imagine all the Gentiles that did right. Imagine all the ones at the great white throne judgment. Their name is in the book of life. And imagine all the future Jews in eternal. Quadruplums of them. No number. Imagine everybody getting together in one big congregation. No sin, no Satan, no backbiting. Can imagine praising God. Christian music today makes me sick. Some of the hymns that we sing and all that just makes me sick. They're anti-scriptural. They're totally wrong. Wait till we do it with all sinless perfection and holiness. It'll be all right. It'll be all glory to God. I mean, if you want a proper hymnal, Psalms is supposed to be sung. And with the right spirit. I can't fathom what the millennium is going to be like. And I can't even begin what eternity is going to be right. But I do know one thing. I know there's one group of people who are an outcast of all the people in the world. There is some group somewhere in every country that's against God's people. And yet God's not against them, and he's not done with them. And that's what we're reading about. Isaiah is written to a nation of people who are sinning. Are God's going to come in. He's going to destroy the land. And Isaiah is written to say, hey, I love you. Get right. 
And if you don't get right, you're going to have a big red tiny. And you're not going to be able to sit down for seven years. And when I'm done, I'm going to wrap my arms around you and I'm going to love you. That's the Bible. 